Hi, and welcome to lesson 12 on single photons. In step one, we're going to discuss what are the interesting observables and what are the number states. So what are the important and interesting observables? They are the Q and the P operators that we have introduced in the previous lesson. To remind you, Q and P are related to the real part and the imaginary part of the complex field amplitude E. And we said that they obey the canonical commutation relations, meaning that the commutator of Q and P is equal to I H bar. And in principle, because uh, Q and P are Hermitian, Hermitian operators, they can be measured and observed. On the other hand, what cannot be observed are the creation and annihilation operators. A is the annihilation operator, given as a combination of Q and P in the following form, whereas a dagger, its Hermitian conjugate, is given by the following form, Q minus IP. And we can see that A dagger and A are not Hermitian conjugates, meaning they do not represent observable quantities. However, all the observables that we're going to use in this lesson and in the following lessons will be written in terms of A dagger and A. And they follow the following commutation relations, which I urge you to commit to your memory. The commutator of A with A dagger is equal to one. We will use these commutation relations repeatedly in this lesson and in the following lessons. And we have seen already other observable uh, operators that are of vital importance in our discussions, such as the Hamiltonian, which tells us the energy uh, in a single mode of an electromagnetic field, Hm is equal to h bar omega m times a dagger a plus one half. This m is used to label the mode. Corresponding uh, to the number uh, of excitations in the field is the number operator, simply given by a dagger a. And using the creation and annihilation operators, we can write the electric and its cor corresponding magnetic field, given as he follows here. This I here is a convention used in many textbooks. You could write it without it, but we follow the con this convention. E is the polarization vector, capital uh, E1 is the one photon amplitude, and then we've got the following combination of the creation and annihilation operators with their corresponding uh, exponentials. And for completeness, we write the form of the magnetic field using the creation and annihilation operators as well, although we are not really going to use it in the remainder of this module. Only we're going to concentrate on E. And we have seen what the eigenstates of our uh, Hamiltonian for a single mode are. They are given by these eigenvectors psi n. And they are such that when we uh, compute the effect of the Hamiltonian on our eigenvector, we get the eigenvalue or the eigenenergy corresponding to that eigenvector. And from now on, we're only going to concentrate on single mode fields where we don't have to worry about in which mode we are talking about. Therefore, we are going to omit the subscript m to a little bit simplify the notation. So we have that h operating on psi n is equal to e n times psi n. And using Dirac's result, we know what these energies are. They're given by the following expression, where we replace the number operator with its eigenvalue n. And we said that n can only vary from 0, 1, 2, and higher. They can never be negative. And the corresponding eigenvectors obey the following rules when we apply the creation and annihilation operators on them. A is the annihilation operator because it destroys one quantum of energy in our single mode field and decreases the energy value and therefore also decreases to the corresponding uh, eigenvector given by psi n minus 1. On the other hand, a dagger does the opposite. It creates one quantum of energy in the field and takes us from psi n to its upper neighbor psi n plus one. And we've got the following relationship for the number operator. Now, these psi n's normally are not written in terms of psi n, we just omit the uh, ps uh, letter psi and write them as ket n. And they're so important that they've got their own name, they're known as the number states, or sometimes also as the Fock states, after Vladimir Fock. 
So let's write out some of these states. And let's start from the lowest energy state given by n equals to zero. We already saw that the energy is finite, it's not zero, it's given by E naught is equal to one half times h bar omega. And the eigenvector is written as this ket of zero. And we call this state the vacuum. If we increase n by one, so n equals to one, our energy goes up to three over two h bar omega. And the corresponding state is denoted by the ket of one, which can be obtained from the vacuum by applying the creation operator once. Again, we can go higher and higher to n equals two, then the energy is equal to five over two h bar omega, and the eigenvector can be obtained by applying the creation operator on our vacuum twice and renormalizing by square root of uh, two factorial. So we can see that as we are applying these creation operators, we're going higher and higher and higher. And each time we do that, we are adding a quantum of energy equal to h bar omega. So we can interpret the state given by the number state n as a state of the field containing n particles where each particle has energy h bar omega. In other words, we can interpret these particles as photons. So a number state n really means that we are talking about n excitations or n photons in our field. This brings us back uh, formally to the idea that Einstein introduced that field of ele that electromagnetic field is quantized and comes in packets of finite energy, which he which others then called photons. So this concludes our discussion of the observables that we're going to talk about in the number states. Now let's start talking about some important number states.